University of Witwatersrand, a heartfelt greeting to one and all and a warm welcome. Thank you for taking the time to join us today to honor and celebrate the life of a mother, sister, aunt, friend, esteemed colleague, mentor, supervisor, researcher, and role model. We gather to remember the big things and the little things that make a special place in all our hearts. To remember those happy days or happy times when we laughed and those times when our heart broke as one. For who could put a price on memories? Thus, we gather to share the pain and the special endearing moments that we shared with our beloved Dr. Mon Manono. My name is Gita Motilal, and I have been with Manono from the time she joined WITS. I will be your program director today as we remember and celebrate the life of Dr. Manono Pau. Let me express the family's gratitude for your presence and the awe for this organization to recognize the precious Manono in such a dignified and worthy memorial service. Heartful thanks to the organizers and their team for, uh, and uh, Presha Ramsarup and Rio, who provided the platform and the te technical assistance for making this possible. A big thank you to Emmanuel Ojo and the Foundation Studies team from the Witt School of Education to bring the program together. Thank you to all the speakers who have come together to share their short tribute about their life with Manono. Without further ado, I would like to begin the program with a hymn followed by Corin Matthews to open the program with a prayer. Oh, 
Let us pray. Lord, this morning we come to you and you see us for who we are and where we find ourselves. We come before you and we just honor you for the life of our friend and our sister. God, this morning would have been her birthday. And God, little did we know that we would be gathered in this particular way to celebrate her life. So we ask that in this next hour that lies ahead of us, that we would grieve and celebrate her life appropriately. But we pray that she has touched us significantly and she has moved us to tears and she has enriched our lives. So God, we thank you that you teach us these difficult lessons during difficult times about the shortness of love, life, and the importance of respect, and the journey of relationships, and the power of forgiveness. So as we continue in the service this, this morning, we ask that you guide every heart, and every word, and every lip, and that you will allow us to know that we will be comforted because your word teaches us Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So give Gita grace and mercy as she directs us. Give every speaker that would say something, just a, a facet of Manono, so that we can be able to be the people in this moment, for this time, for who you have made us to be, in your precious and loving name. Amen and Amen. Thank you, Karen. Indeed, it is a very emotional day for everybody because today Manona would have been celebrating her birthday. And here we are celebrating her life. I would now like to call our acting head of school, Dr. Tabasile Nkambule, to present her talk. Dr. Tabasile? Thanks very much, uh, Chairperson. Greetings to the Dean and everyone attending. Once again, 
we would like to extend our condolences to Dr. Paul's family, her daughter Busisiwe, friends, colleagues, and the students. It is another sad day in the school as we remember the life of Dr. Manono 11 days after our late head of school memorial service. I could not believe when I heard the news of Dr. Manono's passing. I asked myself how it happened so suddenly. We had been communicating about HR issues mid-June. We have lost yet another dedicated and hardworking colleague. Dr. Manono was passionate about education generally, particularly foundation phase and mathematics. Her foundation phase students speak proudly of her mathematics knowledge and expertise, clearly stating that they teach mathematics with confidence because of how she taught them. Dr. Manono has touched many lives in the foundation phase division and the school holistically. She always availed herself in the school selflessly. She headed the foundation phase division and coordinated introduction to, fund to foundation phase amongst uh, many. Her commitment to academic projects in the school will be sorely missed. We had lots of plans uh, for her in the school after becoming a doctor, particularly for postgraduate portfolio, as I admired her commitment and selfishly, I wanted to steal her. She had great plans to continue with her academic work, mainly her publications, conceptualizing her mathematics project and supervising postgraduate students, specifically adding PhD students uh, to her portfolio. These plans clearly indicate her passion for education and research. She was always smiling and rushing to class because she always prioritized her work with the students. And she always gave um, her time to chat and listen to our ideas um, and offer suggestions when necessary. We will definitely miss all the laughing moments we had with Dr. Manono. Dr. Manono, we will always miss you in the school and you will always be in our thoughts. Lala Gahle, sis Dr. Manono, sis Othala, si kumbulas katizongi. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, Dr. Tabisila, for those wonderful memories and kind words. Manono was a teacher educator, the B.Ed. program coordinator for a number of years, the foundation phase TE coordinator, and she taught in several courses in mathematics in primary school. Her accomplishment speaks volumes about her, and it was an extremely proud moment for us all to celebrate her PhD. And we were hoping that her scholarship in maths education would flourish, definitely. Let us hear more about this from Manono's supervisor and project leader, Professor Hamsa Venkatakrishnan. Thank you, Geeta, and thank you to the School of Education for organizing this memorial. I'm speaking here as Manono's doctoral supervisor and a research project colleague. Manono began her PhD quite a long time ago. She came with a, with a strong sense of the problem that she wanted to investigate, and it was this. How is it that when the research literature tells us that it's better for young children to learn mathematics in their home languages rather than in English, because they can make better sense and better meaning of what's going on, that we, what we see in South Africa is a pattern that shows that black South African learners in English medium classrooms show higher performance than black South African learners in home language classrooms. She was clear that this pattern of performance that bothered her, it didn't make sense and she wanted to understand what was going on. We had a broader project we were working in that included English and home language classrooms. Manono set about writing her proposal and she set up a research design that involved watching sequences of early grade 
grade three mathematics lessons in two English and two Sepedi medium classrooms. She negotiated the access herself, bringing her years of experience in foundation phase to the table in her interactions with the teachers. In the years following her data collection, we were reading the literature together and we were looking at her data. She noticed that Ursula Hoadley, a colleague in Cape Town, that Ursula Hoadley's doctoral study explained how teaching looked different in, in wealthier schools and in poorer schools, um, and in terms particularly of the extent to which children got any individual evaluation of their work. She started off her own data analysis by trying to use that framework, but she came back to me quite early on and she said, you know, this doesn't pick up the fact that in the Sepedi language classrooms that I saw, they, they, I saw code switching between Sepedi and English, but what those teachers didn't do so much was work with diagrams and with other mathematical representations on their board with their children, and certainly less so than I saw in the English medium classrooms. In amidst the disruptions that were due to her, her ill health and other problems, she carried on working. She constructed a framework that included teachers work with language and with mathematical representations. Using this framework, her own framework, she was able to highlight key differences in how mathematics is presented to children across her, across her English and her Sepedi medium classrooms. It was a really good PhD. Professor Giladla was one of the examiners and she agreed on, on its strengths and its potential to impact on, on forward work in terms of teacher development. I always enjoyed working with Manono. Her emotions were always on her face. If she was irritated with me by my, about my repeated comments, I was sure to know it. But we would sit and we would talk. I would explain why I thought that the work was writing was moving forward. And I would laugh because her expression didn't seem to say this. She would laugh back. And then she would say to me, I don't like it when you make me laugh when I want to be angry with you. But she would carry on with the work. After the PhD and immediately after the PhD, she set about, as others have said, writing a paper. She wrote a chapter in, a, in, the, in the book that was co-edited by, by Tony Essien and Audrey and Simanga. And actually just two weeks before she passed, she'd submitted a paper, a paper that she wrote during her sabbatical. During this year, I was asked to take part in a qualitative evaluation study of another early grade mathematics project. Manono was the obvious person to work with, given her extensive experience. Dr. Samantha Morrison and I had a wonderful few days with, with Manono in Calc Bay in February this year, just as lockdowns were finishing. And we talked together and we planned with Ursula Hoadley's team about the work on that project. Manono was the way that she'd always been. She was highly present. She was highly engaged. She was collegial and she was as forthright as ever. She was on sabbatical at the time and she told us that she couldn't stop watching the Zondo Commission. She entertained us with her commentaries, which were so much more frank and so much more honest and so much more true and so much more good than much that I felt that I was hearing when I watched on screen. I treasure the memory of those three days and the supervision that came before it. Manora's loss is not just mine or our teams or her families. She had important work to do in the foundation phase. I know from Corinne that she was a collegial, straightforward and hardworking in, in her work in the foundation phase. And she had an inability to do anything other than say it as she saw it. To Boosie, to Manono's sisters and her broader family, my heartfelt condolences. For all of us, Manono's, Manono's expression on the invite for this memorial is a reminder that she's watching us with a look that says, ah, don't give me that rubbish. She, she knew what she was about all the time. Our work in foundation phase is a little bit darker. It's a little bit heavier without you here, Manono. But we continue the work in your name, in your memory, and with your spirit. Go well, my friend, I'm gonna miss you that I'll always remember you. Thank you, Gita. Thank you, Prof Hamsa. Again and again, we have heard of Manono's solid work and commitment, and it was good to hear about her PhD. Next, I will ask Professor Mary Metcalf, a mentor and collaborator with Manono. 
In fact, it was the insight of Professor Metcalf under whose headship that Monona joined the School of Education. Professor Metcalf. Thank you so much, um, Gita. I want to express my condolences to the family and to the School of Education. Um, to Hilda and Bosisiwe, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to join virtually at the family's memorial service and thank you for reading my tribute there. But I wish I could be with you today to give you a hug, to give you the collective hug of the whole School of Education for this remarkable woman that we've lost. And to my colleagues at the Witt School of Education, I've loved hearing the memories of recent work with Minono and all that she had achieved. I want to say that we've been robbed. We've been robbed at a time when the country really needs our best educators to assist in everything that needs to be done. We've lost both Minono and we've lost Audrey. And they both had so much to contribute. And I also know that so many of us have lost friends, family, colleagues in this terrible time of COVID and the country's education recovery from COVID is going to be a challenge for which we needed the love, passion and commitment of educators like Manono. I remember when we first found Manono. She just immediately was somebody that I knew would make a huge contribution to the School of Education and to Foundation Phase in particular, where we really needed persons of her caliber and experience. I remember that she had already spent time in the NGO sector as well as in schools. She'd worked at Mindset, if I recall, and I think she'd also worked at Maltino. And that experience, as well as her time in schools, was so important to bringing our school's work into the much broader range of challenges that the country was facing. So we've been robbed as the School of Education, as well as education um, broadly in the country. But we've also been robbed of a remarkable person. I remember right from the first time I met Manono, the way that the laughter would start in her eyes. She, you could see the humor in terms of what she was thinking before she, she actually said it. She had a huge sense of humor. She had such commitment and passion for education. And as a person, she was extraordinarily generous. She was a strong woman, and we have every reason to be proud of everything that she had achieved, despite the difficult times. I think the last thing that I want to say is that we've also been robbed, because of COVID, of the opportunity to really grieve together. It's so strange to be sitting on my own, wishing to be with all of you, wishing that we could cry together, hug together, be with each other. And COVID has taken that away from us. But I want to thank the school for inviting me, for giving me the opportunity to share my very happy memories of Manono and to celebrate with you all that she's achieved um, since she joined the school. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you and to share how much I loved and respected Manono and give my condolences again to the family, Hilda Busisiwe and everyone else and to the school. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Uh, thanks for sharing those vivid memories of Manono. Manono was a true gem. Her legacy that she created here will live for a long time. Moving on, I would uh, now like to call Mr. Mesenia de Kochla, a former colleague and friend from Maltino, 
where Monono had worked before. Gita, unfortunately, we haven't promoted him. I'm just trying to see if um, he's in attendance so that I can promote him. I'm not no, sure whether he's in yeah. attendance. Should I go on and read what he has sent me? Yes, please. Yes, Gita. Okay, my, uh, I have received uh, an email from De Kochler. He says his name is Messenia De Kochler, the CEO at Maltino Institute for Language and Literacy since 2004. But he joined Maltino in 2003 as CEO designate. He met Manono for the first time in 2003 while she was working for Count as a maths trainer. He found her not only knowledgeable in the subject of maths, but she was also eloquent in teaching and training teachers on it. She joined Maltino in 2006 as national training manager. She reported directly to Mr. Messenia. As a manager, she was accountable for her actions without giving excuses. She was sympathetic to her struggling colleagues she was good at explaining instructions to her subordinates and would insist that they be followed through, otherwise they, there would be consequences. She had full grasp of consequence management. Monona was a very versatile human being. As a maths trained teacher, you would expect her to struggle to transition to literacy discourse. Not her. She transitioned transitioned very easily and became an expert in literacy issues in a short period of time. She was a lifelong learner. When she left us in 2008 to join Witt School of Education, it was a blow to the organization, but we understood as it was for a good cause. She wanted to pursue her PhD studies. I know she has achieved that objective. As we consoled Busi, her daughter, and other members of her family, we want to assure them that the nation has, has lost a treasure in her. She has fought the good fight. She has finished the race and has kept the faith. Okay, so that was the tribute from Mr. Masenia. We following on Manona's work and incredible work ethics, I would like to call a member of the executive and colleague from the maths division, Professor Anthony Essien, to share his talk with us. This will be followed by a short interlude on the memories of the life of Dr. Manono Pau. Thank you very much, Jita. I know I was asked to speak in my capacity as a member of the exec, but I'll be remiss if I don't acknowledge Manono's um, contributions to the mathematics education division while I was head of division. So Manono taught numeracy one and two for a very long time. And when these courses were terminated, she played a very um, pivotal role in mathematics, uh, primary mathematics one. She also contributed to our honors course, Max and the Young Child, and she supervised a number of honors projects during my time as HOD. And for this, I am very grateful. And I think that I speak also for, for the school when I say we are very grateful for, for, for her contributions in this respect. Okay, Manono was steadfast to the end. And I know two of her sabbatical requirements or one of her sabbatical requirements was, was to produce two papers. And she did that as we heard from the supervisor. So I'm not going to repeat what the supervisor said. So all I would need to add here is that for that particular paper, which she submitted just before she was taken away from us, we would like, uh, when the paper comes back with reviews, um, we would like as a school and under my portfolio to rework that paper and ensure that the paper gets published with Manono as 
the sole author because she is the sole author of the paper. So I'll work with her supervisor on this. And um, we, we, we heard and we know that Manono finished her PhD only last year after years and years of hard work. And um, knowing her supervisor, I know it was really hard work to finish this, to the work because the supervisor demands quality each time that um, she supervises her student. So it was really hard work for her. And then just after that, she was just taken away from us. So there, there are at least two ways we can look at this. One way is to ask, where has that knowledge gone? Down the drain? I personally don't wish to look at things this way. I prefer the second perspective on things. And that is that the essence of our being is to find fulfillment in the things we do. May we be consoled then with the knowledge that Manono did what she was passionate about and found that fulfillment in doing the things she did, one of those being the attainment of her PhD. Manono was well loved by her students and that is because of her dedication to them. As others before me have said, we are definitely poorer without you Manono. Happy birthday Manono and rest well. Thank you, Program Director. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Essien. We will now go into an interlude of five minutes and return to the program. Oh, 
to the memorial service. Dr. Monona, in her capacity as a member of the VIT staff, managed to encounter, work, and befriend a number of people while engaged in her work. It is for this reason that we had so many friends and colleagues who were eager to share their time with her in order to celebrate the very elegant and distinguished Manono. We will now call on co-workers, students, and family members to speak. From the Witt School of Education admin support team, we have Mrs. Amita Maroy. Good day, dear family, friends, and colleagues, as well as students. I am Amita, administrator at the Witt School of Education. In paying tribute to our dear colleague, Dr. Manono, it really breaks my heart to look at those pictures. I have known Manona since 2012. To the admin team, she was a professional, courteous, always respectful. Her character bears testimony to the kind of person she was. She was always very straightforward. You always knew where you stood with her. She was direct and to the point. As is evident from the earlier speeches, she maintained very close friendships and bonds with her team. She was always very smartly dressed and that was one of the things I admired most about her. And we shared many conversations because we both love bold colors and we love clothes. When it came to her work ethic, it was unquestionable that she was passionate about her work. She was an ideal role model to her students. In a time when students hold sway over many matters in higher education, she was unwavering in her commitment to upholding high standards. She dedicated her craft of molding foundation phase teachers in training into worthy mentors of the future generations. Her relationship with the admin staff was such that she was very businesslike. You had to do your work properly. And she would not hesitate to question one if she felt that procedures and policies had not been followed. And so long as you did your work correctly, 
you were on her best side. With regards to her students, she was an exacting taskmaster who took a job as a Wits academic very seriously. She chose professionalism above being popular and did not fear or flinch when dealing with those students who tried to bend the rules. She wanted what was best for her students and what was best from them. Mediocrity was not a word that one would associate with Manono. What did I learn from Manono? Always look your best. Always do your best. Always believe in yourself. Never fear repercussions if you are honest and uphold standards. Don't do what is popular. Do what is right, even if you are the only one doing it. If something does not feel right, don't be accepting. Ask, question. There can only be two outcomes. Firstly, either you will learn something new by asking questions, or secondly, you will teach someone something new. And that, my dear friends, is the hallmark of a true educator. In conclusion, to her family, friends, colleagues, and students, we convey our deepest condolences May her soul obtain moksha, which is eternal bliss. To the organizers, thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on behalf of the professional and administrative staff of the Witt School of Education. To Manono, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Thank you, Amita, for those kind words and for that tribute. Uh, Manono, has shared her life with us. And uh, many of her friends and uh, colleagues speak about her honesty and integrity, which is undoubtable. Former students of Dr. Monona Pau loved her and adored her. Several students were surprised and shocked to learn of her early demise. Several students are present today. I will call upon Ms. Cholofelo Molefi, who is a foundation-based teacher, to speak on behalf of former students. In no particular order, I would like to greet everyone who is gathered here today to celebrate the life of Ms. Manolo Paul. I first met Manolo Paul in the year 2015, and ever since I have regarded her as not only a lecturer, but a mentor, a mother, and a friend. I developed a personal relationship with her during my second year at Vets. She helped me through a very dark time in my life. She gave me hope, she restored my dreams. It was a, she was a very strict lady, who did not take chances and what was not very tolerant to shortcuts. She reminded me of the person I want to be. She actually inspired me to be, to want to be someone like her when I grow up. The fire in her eyes, the drive she had, the passion she had for teaching inspired me to be more interested in this teaching profession. It is with great sadness that we are gathered here today, but I'm happy because we are celebrating a life of a hero. We are celebrating a life of a person who has left such a rich, such a rich, oh God. My heart is paining, and every time I think of her, I'm saddened. I remember she came to the school where I was doing practicals. It was my first year. She entered the class, and then when she entered the class, she sat down. One thing about Miss Manono is that she was a lady who could intimidate you by just looking at you. 
she intimidated me and I was so scared. But I told myself, you know what? I will teach and I will deliver my lesson. She wasn't impressed. <laughs> she wasn't impressed. I could see it in her eyes. That's the one thing you could tell about Manono. She was a person who could not hide emotions. When she was not happy with you, you could see it in her face. I'm sad, but I'm happy that God had borrowed us. A great lecturer, she had borrowed her children, her child, Lucifiwe, a great mother. She had borrowed her colleagues, a great friend. She had borrowed her friends, her family, her presence. And today, I just want to say, Lalango Tolo, Ms. Manolo, we will always remember you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila Fellow, for those poignant moments of remembrance from the years gone by. Following Sheila Fellow, we now call up a present student, Tana Sawyer, to speak on behalf of our students, of our students. My dear Dr. Manona Powell, it breaks my heart that I'm appearing here in this moment to talk at your memorial. Your very sudden passing from this world came as a huge shock to everyone. I'm going to keep it short and concise, just as you liked our work to be delivered. I'd like to start with my true and sincere sympathy to all that knew and loved her. Dr. Manono was truly a beautiful little, really little and cute package of dynamite. You all learned not to dare be fooled by her adorable appearance and special smile that lit up her eyes. That strong woman was a formidable creature, full of laughter and life, robust. And it has been really beautiful to see this nature of hers in the pictures that have been shown. Thank you, we celebrate your life. Dr. Manono had an incredible way about her. She could chuckle in the most endearingly lighthearted way and be feisty at the same time. I really loved my lecturer, as did we all. I love how she expressed her heart and truth in her teaching and always consistently demanded the very best from us. Dr. Manono, I want to thank your intelligent spirits for how you touched and reached our hearts and our minds equally powerfully, which is not an easy feat to achieve. She was insightful and always encouraged and motivated us to work harder and she would be determined to make sure we fully understood what was being taught and what she wanted and how she wanted us to be as foundation phase maths teachers. She challenged us to do more research and somehow find connection between psychological theory and her love and passion for mathematics. Not easy, but she inspired us with a heartfelt and driven focus on improving childhood mathematics education. She was the type of woman and lecturer who knew exactly what she wanted and would insist that she got it. You were truly a dynamic lecturer and how you influenced me, I'll always hold close to my heart. It breaks me to experiencing the loss of a lecturer. I value how you impacted my mind and extended my thinking. The energy of your spirit was always abundant with blessings. That is how I truly feel. And I feel you still and carry your persistent energy with me as I endeavor on all my work, especially maths, which has been a struggle, I won't lie. And I encourage everyone to feel that abundance of love and her, and her blessings that emanated out from her and let her carry you. Although you are small physically, your passionate personality was thunderous and still resonates within us all. I'm so sorry for the loss of you on this planet, but even though your beautiful energy has passed on, you live on in our memories. I thank you again for your impact in my life and in my time at Fitz. I am very proud to have experienced you. We remember you with joy and love today and always. I'm not only speaking for myself, but for my class of peers. You were and are a very special spirit and we'll always value our time we had with you. Rest in peace, Dr. Manona Paul. Thank you, Tana. 
your tribute is heart rendering and so solemn. We have lost a stalwart. Manono's teachings will live on in the hundreds and thousands of students that she managed to teach. Next, I call upon a friend, colleague, and confidant who worked hand in hand in the Foundation Studies Division with Dr. Manono, Mrs. Valerie Ramsing. Val, you have to unmute. Thanks. Sorry, there you go. Okay. Manono, Scotty, my friend, colleague, and mentor, you left suddenly without saying goodbye. How I will miss you. When I first met you at Bates in 2008, you generously shared tips on how to succeed in this strange and very challenging environment. The next year, when I joined you in the Foundation Phase Division, you helped me to settle in and to find my own space. For this, I am forever grateful. Over the years, we worked on many projects together and we could easily stand in for each other, even in the middle of a lecture. As time passed, it was inevitable that we would become friends. I will always treasure the memories of how we shared our life's challenges and lessons in a space of safety. I can't remember how many times I cried in your office after losing my mom and my embarrassment at my obvious weakness in handling my emotions. You reassured me that there was nothing to be embarrassed about and that grieving was a necessary and healing process. I remember how you sat in the toilet with a student who had had a panic attack for over an hour until help arrived. I remember how you'd pretend to forget to lock the tea cupboard after I told you about a student who was hungry. Also remember how when we were at a conference, and we needed to go for dinner that evening. You went out in your fluffy pink slippers because you were too tired to change into formal shoes. And then after dinner, when we returned to our rooms, you helped me to redraft a letter because you felt that I had been too direct in what I was saying. No, no, you knew how to make things right. I remember when I wanted to begin my PhD and I mentioned that I wanted to do it at another university. You wasted no time in convincing me that there was no better place to study than at Fitz. You said that a PhD from Fitz is something that you yourself would be very proud of because it would mean that you had worked with the best thinkers around you and that you had understood the subject matter very well. Well done, dear friend, on achieving this very challenging goal. We all know how difficult it was. It breaks my heart that I say goodbye to you again on your birthday today. Happy birthday in heaven, Anonymous. Your parting has left a huge emptiness in my life. I will miss you. I will miss your friendship. I will miss your company, your laughter, strength, and confidence. Sleep in peace, dear Scotty, until we meet again. Thank you for such an honest and touching tribute, Val. I can attest to Manono being the sister to us all. Dr. Jean Place mentioned that we must acknowledge the honesty and integrity uh, that Manono had. 
Speaking about former colleagues, I now call upon Fiona Oldacre to share her memories of Manono. I had the privilege of working with and getting to know Manono when we worked together in the foundation phase division at the Bits Board of Education. We connected through our I had the privilege of working with and getting to know Manono when we worked together in the foundation based division at the Bits Board of Education. We connected through our passion for foundation based maths and we lectured together on a number of different modules. One of the things I loved the most about Manono was her ability to treat everyone with grace and respect. I can't tell you how many times we had academic debates where we were on the complete opposite sides of the events. And yet Manono was always able to actively listen to engage in a sensitive way, to share her own ideas in a respectful way. Um, and we always left the, the conversation still being the greatest of friends and having learned something from each other. When I, when I went to Embury, um, Manona was appointed as my external moderator for one of my maths modules. And even though I knew how busy she was, she still showed so much professionalism, so much dedication, the feedback she would always give me was thoughtful and um, genuine. She had taken time to really give a considered response. I valued that so much about Manono. She actually put in so much effort into everything she was asked to do. I've really tried to emulate so many of Manono's wonderful characteristics in my own interactions with colleagues. Um, and I only hope that I can actually demonstrate even half of the grace that she showed other people. Manono had the most beautiful smile. She had the best laugh. She gave the best hugs. And I will always miss those. I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to get to know her and to have called her my friend. I will miss you, Manono. Thank you, Fiona Oldacre. That was so moving. Uh, she shares so many memories with so many ex former colleagues and present colleagues. Last but not least, we move on to the final tributes and memories to celebrate Manono's life and keep her legacy alive. We have three representatives, two sisters, Hilda Pau and Mpo. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Manona's daughter, Busisiwe, will not be able to speak today, so Hilda will speak on behalf of her. Busisiwe is overcome with emotion uh, because not only are we sharing Manona's birthday, but we're also sharing Manona's life. So I will call upon Hilda Pau. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak here. I would like, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, thank you. I, I would like to thank everybody that, that is here. And um, I would like to thank Vets School of Education for making this memorial service possible for the prayers, for the love and support that they've shown us over the past few weeks. This is a reflection on my sister and how she conducted herself at work. Thank you all for taking the time to attend. Angie has touched a lot of hearts in her professional and in private life. This memorial service coincides with her 56th birthday so happy heavenly birthday, big sister. You left us so suddenly, but in hindsight, your path was clearly carved before you and you saw it from months back. Busi, who is Angie's only child and daughter, is here with us. She is in no position to speak, but she asked that I thank you all for the part that you've played in her mom's life and in supporting us through this difficult time. I was going to speak from the heart, but for fear of getting emotional and wasting an opportunity to honor my late sister and her memory, 
I quickly put together a few pointers about my sister. You may know her as Manunu or Dr. Bo, but to us, she has always been Angie, the second born sister of the seven daughters, our very strict but fair sister. She was determined, courageous woman of integrity, very consistent consistent even in the way she changed her mind. She assumed the role of a mother when we lost our mother in year 2000, but it didn't end there. Mothering came naturally to her. Her former learners uh, at Blair Ethel Farm School, as we know how most of our farm communities are poor communities, and she wasn't doing well either. It was her first proper job but the learners would take their uniforms to her on a Friday for her to wash and iron over the weekend so that they are clean and fresh for the next week ahead. They would each get a fruit or whatever else that was available to eat to sustain them for the long walk back home. And on Monday, anything that was left over the weekend. Our family was not well off either at the time and we relied heavily on her and our eldest sister, Shelly, who left school to work for pick and pay to help the family. And never have I heard them complain about it. As soon as my other sisters finished with their studies and started working, Angie encouraged them to help Shelly go back to school and she became a dental nurse. For the strict person that she was, she was amazingly kind and generous in many ways. She shared everything she had with anyone in need. She shared her knowledge, information. She helped the needy. She gave from the bottom of her heart. Cleanliness and orderliness were important to her. Every time each one of us called and couldn't reach her, we assumed she was taking a bath because that's what she was, that's possibly what she would be doing. And it was important to her to be clean and to smell like a million dollars every time. She loved her expensive perfumes. Her house was freshly painted, always freshly painted, and the floors looked new every day. She would clean after I had cleaned already and told me to not ever clean the house if I didn't feel like it, rather than do what I did, what I had done. And she would iron everything, including vests, all the way down to the pajamas and their frills. Busi has inherited much of this trait. And I would like to forewarn her future colleagues and friends and acquaintances. Angie kept all family traditions, especially the four o'clock tea and biscuits and rusks until the final weeks in her, of her life. She was progressive and, and consistent. Even on holiday, we would laugh when we saw her bringing a tea tray to the poolside for her sisters who would possibly be swimming at the time. And on Sundays, she would cook the traditional seven color Sunday lunch and still make it to church for the nine o'clock service. Oh, and she was a good lover. She was a lover of good music, good food and good wine. That's if she wasn't studying. She would call on me and say, hey, auntie, are you sleeping on the job? I hear Anita Baker or Lionel Richie or Joe Nama Trading is coming to town. Better get those tickets or the food and wine tasting is, the tickets are selling out fast, so better get running. I'm very happy that she was always able to balance her scale, a scale of life as best as she could. Education was important to her, but so was family and life in general. She left the legacy for the lives and the hearts that she has touched. Happy birthday to you, my sister. May you continue to rest well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hilda.
Thank you for the sharing your precious sister with us all. Our deepest condolences again to Busi and her family. If we have Umpo, will Umpo be allowed to say a few words? Hi, Gita. Sorry, I forgot to inform you, but Umpo is caught up in a virtual meeting with other school principals. Thank you, Hilda. It seems like we will not be able to hear from Umpo as well. Uh, I would like to thank every speaker for their heartfelt uh, tribute and memories and reflection on our dear departed Dr. Monono. We will always remember Monono with all her special nuances, her beauty, her elegance, her grace, her bright smile, her collegiality, her loyalty, her sense of humor, her integrity, her knowledge, and as a very dear and special friend. The loss of our colleague, Dr. Monono, is an irreplaceable loss to the school, her family, the nation and the global education community, community at large. This is a huge loss. This comes from Dr. Emmanuel Ojo. She will live in the hearts and minds of both students and colleagues and definitely in the hearts and minds of her family. Monono, you have left a legacy with wits that cannot be wiped out. And most of all, you live in your beautiful daughter, Busi, six sisters, seven nephews, four nieces, three grandnephews, and three grandnieces, who are all mourning your loss and untimely device. We wish you all the strength, family, to deal with this loss. I want to conclude by saying, Manono, your life was a blessing. Your memory is a treasure. You are loved beyond words and missed beyond measure. May your soul rest in eternal peace. You have done your duty on earth. Hamba Gashle, my sister. We will move on to uh, and conclude the program by a music uh, rendition by Dr. Alta and the Foundation Face Koya and to conclude, we will end with a prayer from Corin Matthews. Emmanuel, we can't hear the song. Yes, yeah, sorry, um, Elisha. Um, I think we're still getting the same problem with the sound as we did earlier. Elisha, let me try from my side, please. Elisha? Elisha, you have to unmute yourself, Elisha. Elisha, please, you have to unmute yourself.
We will move into prayer with from Dr. Corin Matthews. Thank you, Gita. Manono, you have made this world a beautiful world. Join me as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy world be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as you forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Gita, Foundation Phase colleagues, Red School of Education, Research Partners, Pussy and Family, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Goodbye, my sister. Till we meet again. Thank you, dear family, friends, and colleagues for the opportunity to share the life and legacy of Dr. Manono Pao. It's, re it's, it's very emotional. Uh, I would like to wish everybody to take care in this pandemic and I would like to thank all the speakers for sharing their their lives with us and with Manono. Rest in peace dear sister. Thank you and bye-bye.
Thank you, Geeta. Bye. Thank you. That, did that bring the program to an end now? Thank you very much, Geeta. I personally appreciate. Thank you, Geeta. Thank you all. It was a moving tribute. Thank you for that. Thank you, Gita. Really appreciate you.